Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 29 of Truck History. On this episode, we will be going through the lengthy history of one of Britain's leading manufacturing companies, Leyland Trucks. Let's dive on in. Today, our story starts off with the legendary motor manufacturer, Leyland, who has a long history dating all the way back to 1896 and their humble beginnings as Lancashire Steam Motor Company in Leyland, England. After first opening up their operations, the company began producing steam-powered lawnmowers, followed by several attempts at steam-powered wagons and vans. In 1904, the company came out with their first ever petrol engine vehicle, the X-Type, nicknamed the Pig, and by 1907, the Lancashire Steam Motor Company had switched its name to Leyland Motors after acquiring the T. Coulthard Company out of Preston, England. Also, later that same year, after absorbing their newest asset, the company began expanding their factory facilities in order to accommodate even more manufacturing. By 1912, Leyland had opened up their operations into making models for the military market, with their three-ton truck, commonly known as the RAF type, which was set to become the standard wartime workhorse. Once World War I broke out in 1914, Leyland was already one step ahead, allowing the company to concentrate on building almost 6,000 total vehicles for the British forces. After the war was over in 1918, Leyland was also able to acquire a former aircraft factory in Kingston-upon-Thames, which was quickly put to work repurposing thousands of ex-RAF-type military truck models. These RAF-type trucks were seen up into the early 20s alongside other post-war models like the four-ton Q-type truck, as well as the following SQ2 7-ton and the SWQ2 10-ton trucks. With that being said, throughout the late 20s and early 30s, Leyland Motors would manufacture some of their most loved and legendary models, including the introduction of their wildly popular zoo-themed T-type trucks. With rigs like the Badger and the Buffalo, both released in 1929, perhaps the most noteworthy of these new trucks was the six-cylinder, 6x4 heavy general service cargo truck, also introduced that same year, which Leyland lovingly called the Hippo. In addition to the almighty Hippo, another truck, known as the Octopus, was also built based on the Hippo, but with eight wheels and an additional axle, allowing gross weights of up to 22 tons. Beyond Leyland's beloved zoo animals, in 1930, the company teamed together with Associated Equipment Company, or AEC for short, to create the iconic 12-axle AEC road train for the British Army. Speaking of building more military models, as the Second World War started and the late 1930s began, Leyland would also release their Retriever 6x4 truck in 1939. Additionally, hundreds of the previously mentioned Hippo models were militarized with open cabs and bodies, known in service as the Hippo MK1 or the WSW-17. The unprecedented use of these heroic Hippos throughout the early parts of the war ultimately resulted in an updated model Hippo MK2 being developed in 1943 for D-Day preparations. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts, the newly designed Hippo MK2s debuted on the scene a tad too late to see service during D-Day. But roughly a thousand Hippo MK2s did help, however, in the following fights leading up to VE, or Victory in Europe Day, on May 8, 1945. Once the war was over, production of military models slowed down, but didn't stop. And a few years following World War II, Leyland would release their Martian 10-ton 6x6 truck model. Also, in December of 1947, 
Leyland introduced their innovative Comet semi-bonneted medium-duty model, which was mainly intended for export markets, with the cab built by Briggs Motor Bodies. When Briggs was bought by Ford a few years later in the early 50s, Leyland was forced to develop new cabs for their Comet models due to striking similarities between the two truck designs. A little later on in 1952, a cab-over configured version of the Comet vehicle became available, sold simultaneously next to its sister bonneted Comet configuration. Moving on into the mid-50s, Leyland Motors saw a massive expansion as they acquired Scammell lorries and Albion Motors. Ashok Leyland was also formed with Indian automobile manufacturer Ashok Motors a few years later in 1954, allowing Leyland access to another new market in India. From 1954 forward, Ashok would manufacture Leyland's Comet model locally, eventually developing their own simplified Comet truck design that would last long into the 1990s. After working with Ashok extensively on the Comet throughout the 1950s, by 1958, it was time for the cult classic Comet vehicle to receive an all-new cab. Called the Vista View configuration, this stacked style semi sported the same cab as the Dodge 300, which was also shared with a company called Albion, which had recently been bought by Leyland. Built by motor panels of Coventry, with better visibility, ergonomics, and driver comfort in mind, these Vista View vehicles were often referred to as LAD designed rigs, with LAD standing as an abbreviation for Leyland Albion Dodge. As the early 1960s unfolded, Leyland would also absorb another couple of manufacturing companies, including Foden Trucks, first and foremost, followed by Standard Triumph International. After acquiring these new companies, Leyland subsequently relaunched their brand under the Leyland Motor Corporation nameplate in 1963. After rebranding themselves the next year in 1964, Leyland would release their fourth generation Comet rig, which featured the fancy new Ergomatic cab. These exclusive Ergomatic cabs came as a replacement for the relatively short-lived Vista View cabs and were designed with the best combination of driver comfort, safety, space, and efficiency possible for the price. Perhaps the most noteworthy feature of these trucks were their forward tilting ability, granting easier access to the engine. Skipping ahead several years, 1968 saw two of the most major truck manufacturers in England merge together, Leyland Motors and British Motors, who teamed together to create the monstrous British Leyland Motor Corporation, or BLMC for short. Although the company made a major move by merging into the BLMC, as the 60s ended and the 70s started, Leyland faced countless financial challenges and found themselves struggling to stay afloat. In spite of these struggles, Leyland still managed to launch their marathon truck model in 1973 which were somewhat based on the other company's models, like the Volvo F88 and the Scania 110-140, but were built with reworked and heavily modified versions of the Ergomatic cab seen throughout the 60s. New versions of both the Buffalo and Bison vehicles were also introduced around this time, both fitted with the same redesigned Ergomatic cab configuration. The 70s also introduced the G-Series range of rigs, which included more animal-oriented model names with the Terrier truck and the Mastiff model, to name a few. Unfortunately, the company had bitten off more than they could chew, and because of this, in 1975, British Leyland Motor Corporation was nationalized by the government. Also, later that same year, the corporation became British Leyland with Leyland Commercials becoming part of their own entity that would eventually be named Leyland Vehicles Limited in 1978. Also around this same time in 1977, the redesigned Marathon 2 truck was released, despite being subsequently shut down two years later in 1979. Although the Marathon models saw a shorter sales stint, 
Leyland had something else up their sleeves for the early 80s. And in 1980, Leyland would launch their road train range of rigs, which included the self-entitled truck, also referred to as the T-45. These T-45s had been subjected to thorough testings in sported sleek aerodynamic cabs called C-40s that helped them earn many awards and accolades throughout the 80s. Despite its award-winning design, overall the road trains were unable to ever reach their full potential due to the devastating recession Europe had entered at the time. Leyland sales continued to struggle, and after wheeling and dealing with many different mergers throughout the past several years, by 1981, Leyland Vehicles Limited split into three separate companies, Leyland Trucks, which we will be focusing on today, alongside Leyland Bus and Leyland Parts. The next year in 1982, Leyland came out with their lightweight cruiser cab over rig. Leyland would also unveil their very first battery-powered truck this same year, a 7.5-ton electric version of their Terrier truck. Leyland also created their constructor truck, which came in both 6- and 8-wheel configurations, with its chassis being brought over directly from the Bison model. In 1984, Leyland would release their answer to the Ford Cargo Cab Over model with the Roadrunner rig. Noted at its introduction for its low-level passenger side window, which was a featured safety aid allowing drivers to see the curb, despite being removed on later models. In 1986, the high-roofed road train Interstate was introduced, an innovative, top-of-the-range long-distance truck with standing room inside. Also in 1986, after almost a decade and a half in retirement, the renowned Comet rig was reintroduced, again with models mainly intended for export markets. Built with an all-new, all-metal design, the fifth and final generation Comet came with sturdy, simplified equipment that made its assembly infinitely easier. Continuing on that same year, later in 1986, Leyland's parent company, British Leyland, was renamed the Rover Group. The following year in 1987, the DAF NV Holding Company is formed due to the merging of the Dutch DAF Trucks and the Leyland Trucks division. With DAF Trucks taking 60% share in the newly developed DAF NV, the Rover Group was left holding the lesser 40%, which led to the rebranding of their merger now known as Leyland DAF. Unfortunately, even under the new DAF NV administration, Leyland DAF continued to see significant struggles financially as the late 80s and early 90s unfolded, which ultimately led to Leyland DAF being placed in a management buyout in June of 1993. Luckily, a little later on in 1996, Peterbilt and Kenworth's parent company, Packar, purchased DAF Trucks, shortly followed by the acquisition of Leyland Trucks, two years after in 1998. With both of these major manufacturers under their belt, Packard would team the two together to create one super company known as the so-called New DAF. Two years later, at the dawn of the new decade in the year 2000, production of fellow subsidiary Foden would be transferred over to the Leyland assembly plant. Sadly, only a few years following the transfer of these trucks over to Leyland, parent company Packar would announce their decision to permanently retire the renowned Foden brand after almost 150 years of truck manufacturing. The next year in 2001, Leyland would release a redevelopment of their renowned 1984 Roadrunner model under the DAF name, known as the DAF LF Light Duty Truck. From this point forward, essentially all Leyland products were produced under the DAF branding, leaving the Leyland name to fall to the wayside as a lesser known name in the industry. Despite being the brawn behind the building of many modern DAF models, such as the current DAF CFs and the DAF XFs. For more information regarding DAF rigs, please check out our History of DAF Trucks video on our channel. Despite being moved slightly towards the back burner as the brains behind the scenes of DAF trucks, 
the legend of Leyland still lives on strong to this day. Standing tall amongst the most trusted truck models and manufacturers available in modern times, Leyland has proudly been part of the Packard legacy for over 20 years. Although this tried and true truck manufacturer has been around for almost 125 years, the legendary Leyland company doesn't look like they'll be stopping anytime soon. That brings you up to date with the history of Leyland Trucks. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 35k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and discuss all things Chrome with our host, Dave Coleman. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some especially sweet spooky-themed stainless sails, including $50 off all grills and visors on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. <laughs>